Welcome back to the crossover with Joe R. Lucas. And ever since the first day I saw this guy put out a Real Madrid uniform, man, all I want to do is bring him on to my podcast. I was thinking, you know, maybe next season I might buy some room for him. He never expected he was going to make such a big splash so soon and so early in the season. So I called my boys at EuroLeague and I said, hey, I need me another Frenchman on the show, man. Let's get this, get, let's get this, what's his name? Yabeselli guy. Let's get him on. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the crossover, Gershon Yabuselli. Thank what's you What's up, so my man? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. Doing great. How about you? Uh, hey, I, like, I, like I told you before, I'm not doing as good as you, but I'm trying. I'm trying yeah. hard. Well, <laughs> man, you just keep you, you killing it, man. You're having a great season. Uh, so far, it's been pretty good. Uh, pretty good. Cannot complain at all. Uh, I'm just having a, a great time in here in Madrid, uh, enjoying every moment on the court uh, with my teammates. And for sure, we, we have a good result. So we're pretty happy about the season so far. The, the introduction is is like the absolute truth too, but I'm not I'm not BSing you at all. I said when this <laughs> when this whole podcast adventure started about three four years ago, mm -hmm. I had people even like a couple of players, a couple of people on your team. I might even say one of your coaches' names, but I don't want to throw it out there too much. <laughs> I like like turning me away, like nah nah man, I don't have time for that. It's too long. It's too you know, yeah. too much. But all this and that. And ever since then, I've got agents. You know, about, about a year, a year and some change in, I've got agents, players, even some of the coaches calling me going, hey, man, when when am I going to get on this damn podcast? Man, when am I going to get on the crossover? So I gave you like a fast track pass at the airport. You know what I mean? Hey, hey, thank you. Appreciate Appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> I, I called your last said, man, get this guy on. I got to talk, though. <laughs> Appreciate it. I've, I've heard so many nicknames for you, man. And I keep hearing the dancing bear. And, and I got this, I got this producer in my ear, Chris, all the time, man. He's just like the dancing bear, man. That every time you do something good, like the dancing bear, I'm like, no, nah, it's not official yet. I'm not ready to call him the dancing bear until I get permission, man. I, Cause I don't see it that, that many places. I know it came from Boston, right. but right. we have to make it official today. Is it the dancing bear? You got another nickname? You got, you got like an American nickname and a European nickname. What's the deal? So it's like, it's really different because um, I feel like it's really like how people feel, you know? Some people call me Dancing Bear. Some people call me Yabu, uh, Yabu Yabu oh, wow. in Spain most of the time. Or uh, some people call me Le Beer. It's like, you know, a little French yeah. too. So, okay. you know, for me, it's it doesn't matter. It's really, you know, how you feel. But I, I say Bear, uh, Dancing Bear or Yabu, it's fine. It's fine with me. Uh, so I'm not gonna get yelled at by using like any, you know. No, no, you you gonna be okay. Because, <laughs> uh, because you know, I commentate on all, most of your home games, but I did miss one this year, and it was against Panathinaikos because I had a I had an event in Greece. Okay. And and the guy who took over for me said something about you using your big booty to get position down low. Did you <laughs> did you see that? That kind of went viral for a minute. So I I didn't heard of it because obviously I was in the game but I like I had a lot of friends sending me it, like on Instagram and I was like yo what's going on and so many friends was like did you know the guy and I was like no like you know it just say it or whatever you know but I was surprised at first but it started turned to be funny you hey you want to know the funniest part about that story no you know you know who the guy is that commentated that game who, who called you big booty no the same guy who asked you the questions for the Euroleague. It's my son. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my son, Dane. So next next home game, when he comes up and gives you an interview, you know. You, uh, yeah, I will, I will talk to him. <laughs> yeah, you can talk to him straight up and make sure that he knows what the deal is. No problem. <laughs> hey, before we get started with your life story a little bit, I, I, I just want to congratulate you on, on signing the new contract, man. Thank I mean, you. I just, I, you know, I, you, there's no doubt you deserve it, and and I thought it was I thought it was a no brainer by Real Madrid to to make sure you at least stick around for a while. Yes, no, the, thank you so much. I'm I was pretty excited about um about the news, you know, when my agent called me, uh, because of course, like I said before, I feel so so good in here, you know, I'm having fun and you know enjoying every game, uh, even practice, you know, so it's it's a big big uh structure here so to be part of um this big team this big history team um it's something that i, I will never take it for granted
we're going to get into a little bit more yep. later, but it's it's so difficult, man, for a guy to come in so new, yeah, yeah. And, and and do what you're doing. It's it, it's I've seen so many people come in from other teams that have played well that mm -hmm. have just not been able to fit in, yeah, or yeah. find their place. But you, I mean, you've looked comfortable from day one, which is great. Mm -hmm. Thank you, man. T tell me about. Tell me, I mean, you know, this is about you. So I want to know a little bit about your your folks, man. They they came from the Republic of Congo, right? Yes. And yes. They, they write the France? Uh, yeah, both parents. So my dad came to France before my mama. Okay. And um, she came two or three years after him. Uh, was my big sister. But they, they were um, already together, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they were. Uh, but my dad was the, the first one to come to France with the, some of my uh, uncle. Okay. Um, they came in France in the, next to Paris, you know, in Dreux, my city. And then my family came, uh, my cousins, uh, my sisters, and a bunch of other people. So, yeah. And and he was a boxer when you were growing up, right? Yep. Yes. It's so crazy because my my old man wasn't, but my uncle was, who was my godfather. Yeah. And, okay. uh, and yeah, I'm talking about like way back in the days now, but but it was... When I heard that, I was like, the first time I heard that was when I was doing a game of yours. I was like, man, the boxing thing is so cool. What, how, how how far did your dad go? How how far did he get? Uh, I say it, it was he was uh, playing pro. He did a little bit here in France, but in Congo, he was uh, uh, doing pro. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, he became a coach. And uh, he was training uh, all of the uh, people from my city uh, just for free, you know, coming at the gym. And he was bringing a bunch of people just to train them how to you know how to fight and stuff like that and how much the i mean the assumption for us from the outside is the physicality of, of mm -hmm. boxing you know if you you grew up boxing a little bit with you, you yes. said and, and the physicality is an advantage when you when you play because you play a physical game because you, you yep. do have the big body mm -hmm. But the footwork has got to be also uh, an important part of all that, right? Yes, it is. It is. And uh, um, I thank my dad every day, you know, uh, because this helped me even today, again, you know, with my right. foot. Um, and and that was one of the reasons why in Boston they call me the Dancing Bear, because, you know, it was <laughs> like, uh, he, he's like a bear and uh, he moves so so fit with his, uh, his foot, you know. So uh, for sure, uh, this helped me a lot. And even sometimes in the summer, I'm really trying to keep on uh, training uh, boxing skills, you know, because of the footsteps. And I know this uh, helped me a lot, you know, with my weight and my body, you know, so for sure, this is a, a big part. That, that's interesting. I was going to ask you if you still continue or not to do, to do the boxing drills and stuff. What, so what kind of, what kind of things do you do? Like footwork, shuffle work? Are, are you punching the bag too, or? Yeah, I'm I'm doing pretty much it all because uh, one. You're not, you're not. Hey, you're not going one on one though, right? You're not getting hit. No, <laughs> no, 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 never, <laughs> never. But uh, it's one thing that I really like about like a boxing training is the whole thing. Like you know, you you work your whole body, right. and uh, the core, uh, the strength. Uh, when you punch the bag, you know you work on on a lot of part of your body, your arms. You know, is is really your whole body that's working. So it's really something that I, I try to keep on doing uh, during the season. I've Obviously, it's, it's difficult because we have so many games. But yeah. um, when, when I have a time off, I really like to to train. But but it was your dad that pushed you away from boxing, from what I understand. It didn't push me away. Um, one thing is we were always doing boxing, and uh, but I wanted to be a soccer player. You so, wanted to, just like everybody, man. All you yeah. all you all it's you true. European guys, man, want to make the big money. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, it's it's really how we grew up. You go to school, you play soccer, you go out with your friend, it's soccer everywhere, you know? Right. So so for sure, I always wanted to be a soccer player. Then my dad was telling me, you're too tall. Like, you're not going to be a soccer player. It's impossible. So uh, going... He, 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 he probably thought you weren't going to be a boxer either being that pro tall. Probably, probably. <laughs> but then then he was one of the coaches that was training us. Uh, that told me like hey, you should try basketball because he was playing pro in the basketball team uh, in my city. Then when I, I tried and I was pretty good, then they called my dad. It was, they was like, I really think you know you can do something. And then going from there, I just fell in love with the game and keep on going to practice. And I just like the whole vibes. The style was so different, and it just fit me well. Was it 
was it an uncomfortable transition for you from, from boxing to basketball, from, from football to basketball, whatever? Or was it like you picked it up right off the bat and just had that talent? So at first, I would say soccer to basketball because uh, I, I didn't like want to listen that I was not going to be a soccer player. It was, it was really hard for me. I was watching my friends playing every day. I was like, oh, man, I want to be part of it, you know? They're going to practice together and stuff. And then after that, as soon as, like, we played games and stuff with basketball, then I just, I was like, oh, man, I don't want to play soccer no more. Now I want to be a basketball player. So I just did, that transition just took, like, a couple of weeks. But then after that, I was just fine. It's, it's an addicting sport once you, once you get into it, man. It is. It is, really. Like, even, like, you know, sometimes when we, you get, like, so much time off, uh, summer and stuff like that, I stay home and I'm, I'm looking at my family and I'm like, oh, I want to play right now. Like, I'm, I miss it. Like, I, I hate just staying in the house and just walk around days after days. Like, I want to play. That, 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 that's usually how you feel, like, that's usually how you feel the first the first month after the season's over. You don't feel like you miss it that much, but yeah. But if you're around if you're around your family for three months straight, you're like after two months, like, man, come on. <laughs> get me on the court. <laughs> come on, man! I've been there. I've been there, done that. That's true. <laughs> That's that, true. Those, those two hours that you hate to go to practice sure feel good sometimes, don't they? It's true, hundred percent. But it, 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 what I've missed in my research is is how you got from from this coach saying, telling you to go play basketball, give basketball a shot to the first time you signed um, for your first season. Mm -hmm. Like what, what was the process in between there? I mean, did you have, did you have goals? Did you have like dreams? At first, not really uh, starting playing basketball. All I was thinking, it was just, you know, going on the court um, with my friend and having fun. Uh, you know, meeting new people, just just try to learn some stuff. You know, I, I I never really take that serious until I was maybe 16, right, 15. Right. And uh, at this point, you know, uh, growing up, watching a lot of NBA, you, of course you dream about the NBA, but it's not something that you have in your mind uh, telling yourself, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make everything to go there. You know, you just right, look right. and it's like, oh, I hope one day, you know. And yeah. then, um, and then we all we all think that no matter what, <laughs> exactly like always, you know. So, yeah. so for sure, like when I was like 18, 19, and I, I signed uh, in the pro A team in Rouen, and then I heard like um, scouts was coming to see me. Uh, scout was talking about me and stuff like that. Then this, you know, clicked in my head. Then I was like, oh, I might have something, and you know, people calling me every day and telling me like, listen, just stay focused. Don't, you know, over pressure, right, like, right. you know, play like you always do. Have fun, go, and then what happened, like, what happened, happened, and if you don't, it's okay. You know, you always play what you love to do. So, for sure, going through the end, and, you know, of course, after the draft and everything, it made it, like, wholesome. What, 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 when, when people tell you, that that's the funny thing about it, is when people tell you, like, hey, this is what's happening, don't feel any pressure, don't, don't think about it, just play. You can't help but to think, you know what I mean? Dude, dude, like they put they put more pressure saying that. <laughs> exactly. Like, cause like you was like, okay, I'm I gotta stay natural, but at the same time, you don't act natural. So it's like, it's 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 kind of between, especially when you're young. Yeah. Like you always get that over pressure for sure. Yeah, your mind, you can't close your eyes at night without thinking like someone was at the game today, or if I, if yes. I had a bad game, the scout might have been there. Yes. True. Or I had a good. Usually it's if I had a bad game, there was three scouts there. And if I had a good game, there were no scouts there. There was, the, <laughs> there was nobody. True. But you got drafted. You you were four different. You were four. There's four players in 2016 that got drafted from France, right? From France, yeah. Who who were the other three? Name them. Timothée Luau, uh, Azaya Cordinier, and uh, Peter Corneli. Right. Well, you don't you don't get points for that one. We'll we'll, we'll test you later. That was, <laughs> that was an easy one. That, that, that was an easy one. Those are my guys, so for sure. <laughs> Your test comes at the end, but you for were the sure. first one. Did you expect to be the first one? No. So the whole the whole thing how it goes. Um, I was supposed to be late first round, right. beginning of second, you know, more of the late first round. Uh, my friend Timothy was supposed to be 14 uh, from um, Denver, I think. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we had the draft. So me and my, my agent, because, you know, you have a little pressure. So at the 
third no after the 14th pick we went to the bathroom we coming back you were like, you in new york for the drive yeah i was there okay i was there for sure like i i felt like this is like a big moment you know even if I don't get draft, you know, just to have the feeling right. to be there to enjoy it. I feel like it's it's an experience, you know. So we went to the bathroom, coming back, it was like the 15 picks. And um, I text my friend because I still see him sitting in, and you know, I was talking to him like what's going on, but he he didn't know. And um uh, at the draft, it's something that you don't see on the TV, but at the draft, they come a little bit before the pick with the cameras. Okay. So you you kind of know who's gonna be the next pick, right? So yeah, they come yeah, but, but y'all were sitting together, weren't you? Or no, no, I was I was a little bit up in the stand oh, because okay. like I told you, I was supposed to be like first, you know, ahead of first round. And then we saw the cameras and they look at us, and my agent goes, Is is it for Yabuseli? And it was like, Yes. So he think, and then it was like, Is it for Gershon? <laughs> it was like, Yeah. And it was like like. You want me to show you the, the, the paper? And then they look and they see my name. And then like we just go like, woof. Because like we were surprised. Like Boston didn't tell nobody at all really? that they was going to draft me. Yeah. So for me, it was really like the best moment. Like now my mom is crying. Like, you know, she can't help it. Like we, it's like so much pressure going to my body. Then I'm walking, I'm shaking, I'm going with the hat. And then after that, you know, it was, it was just amazing. It, it, is there a moment? When was the moment where you... Where you just like, I don't know, you you were maybe by yourself or, or maybe out to dinner with someone, you just you just like get it, you're like, damn, I just got a job. I can't, what the hell? <laughs> where where did this come from? It it took me like two months really right. to right. just to tell myself, okay, now you're there. Because you know, after the draft, we went to dinner. Then my friend Timothy and uh, Zaya was there with the family, same dinner, same restaurant. For some reason. Oh, so you, hey, you, hey, you had to pay too, right? Right. <laughs> for sure. That that was that was that was the money coming right now. So I had to I had to take care of everybody. Hey, for man, sure. You go, you go first. You got to pay. <laughs> but yeah. So after that, we were all at the same restaurant looking at each other, like, wow, like we just did something today. You know, it was just crazy. We went back. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. And uh, you know, you had to fly the next day to the city to do the interview and stuff. And I'm um, seeing the other players and then everybody's just so happy. And it's just a, a moment that you that you keep in you like for your, your whole life, you know, as it was just amazing. It's something that I would never have felt again. You know, it was just crazy. And and that that I mean, it, it's always a good feeling because I got drafted. I went and, and you, we did the rookie thing first and everything else. And then, mm -hmm. then when you made the team, it's like that first day where all the vets get in. Yes. But that's like it's like a whole different. It's like. You just, you just, once again, you just went from college to the NBA again, you know what yes. I mean? True. It's, a, it's an amazing feeling because he's like, I was just watching you guys on TV, then now I'm part of the team. And, right. you know, then you, you got to learn quick. you rookie. You got all this stuff. And, you know, you you just, like, for me, I had, like, Al Orford in front of me and all these guys. Like, I'm, I'm you know, in myself, I'm like, I'm trying to learn so much from you guys. Right. You know, right. like, you guys are just so great as a player so for sure it's, it's been it's been great until you start getting that confidence where you're like damn i can play with these guys man i can't play with like <laughs> exactly like once you score one two time and then you do a couple of good action you're like yeah. oh wow i can't be part of this exactly. thing like exactly. you know i can be the the guy too so for sure it's, it's, it's a strange feeling when you're kind of like that when you're not that that heavy number one draft pick and you know for yeah. sure you're gonna play in the nba and you're gonna start with yeah that it's a great it's a strange feeling when you get that like Shit, man, I can do this. <laughs> true, true. It's, it's really like a, a great feeling when, when you, once you feel that, and then you have this confidence, then you know you got to keep it exactly. every day, and you just got to work and try to get better, even though what, you you can't play there. The the thing I always talk about is, and I even do this when I speak to kids nowadays and and, and whatever is, is is that dream, you know, that the the athletic dream you have, whether it's a boxer, a baseball player, soccer player, yeah. whatever. Of, of making it yeah the, the dream of making it but but none of us when we when we have that dream realize the reality afterwards that you know like yeah. it, it took me three months to get cut you yeah you went back and forth between maine and the and the, and the g league and boston and it never really like that dream 
never really fulfilled itself. You know what I mean? True. I, True. Yeah, for sure. The draft for, for sure. sure. So how, how does that? Because I, I'm, I kind of went through the same thing. You went through it over a couple year period. Yeah. How does that hurt your confidence? You know that that, that you've developed through that time. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna lie. It was it was probably some of the toughest um, day of of my life. You know, playing basketball. I never been in this situation. Um, I always been on the team, and you know, I play some minute, uh, do some mistake, you know, learn, score, you know, pass, you know, whatever. But uh, I never been in this situation to play zero minutes. It's <laughs> like you, you're just on the bench and you don't play. Right. And it's just okay. You go home, and then you know you got so much energy. Like me, uh, you can tell. You know, I'm an energy guy. Like I love just yeah. to to give my energy, just to go everywhere. You know, so. For me, I'm going home and I just can't sleep because I have this much energy that I didn't, you know, spend on the court. So I'm like, okay, next game is going to be good. And then second game, you play zero minute. And then third game, zero minute. And then you, you go like 10 games straight, you know? The, so you, you start thinking like, yo, like, how is it going to be like for the whole season? You know, so for sure, you, you're, doubting, you're doubting yourself a little bit uh confidence a little bit down but you still try to go to the gym and work you know and then uh you got a little bit of garbage time um then you go to Maine to play a couple of minutes so you stay in shape and stuff like that but it was just it was just really hard it was really hard I hey mean the hardest thing for me was I gained like I gained like four or five kilos man when I was because because I'm like all right I'm on an NBA team I must be in shape we hardly practiced once the season okay. started, and like yes. you said, I was I was like, I, I I balled out one day in Denver, scored seventeen points, and yes. and the coach is like, man, we're going with the rookies, we're going with the rookies. And eight games yes. later, against the Lakers and Magic Johnson, he takes me off the bench. Like, go ahead, bro. I'm like, dude, I haven't played in eight <laughs> games. I'm overweight. <laughs> True. The, the, so so this is one thing that everybody was telling me, and it was hard for me to get it, but. It, the, it's really how it works. Like you don't play for 10 games, but the 11 game, then you come to the gym, you know, telling yourself, okay, I'm not going to play again. And coach is like, get ready. You're starting today. And you're like, <laughs> what? Okay. So now you start, uh, see the physio is like, let me, let's trash. Let's do this. And you try, you just try to get ready, but it's, it's really how it is. You know, uh, you never really know when he's going to put you on the court. And this is like, um, another feeling that is hard to fit because you you just practice sometimes and you don't play for a long times. Right. And then once you think it's like, okay, I'm not going to play. And then boom, he puts you on the court. So it's, it's really one thing that they always say over there is stay ready. Yeah, it, yeah and it, ready. it's strange because it's not like it is here. A lot of people don't get this. It's not like it is here where, where every day y'all are practicing to get yeah. and doing things. Like in the NBA, at least when I was there, it was like you had a game tomorrow, you, walked, you did a walkthrough over the place. That's it. So you never really even, even when he calls you after the 13th game, you have, yes. I, haven't, I haven't played with these guys in a month and a half. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and this is really like um, a thing over there because um, like you said, we practice 10, 15 minutes, right? You know, we just walk through and goes and the guys that don't play too much do like two on two, three on three, but it's, it's hard to stay in shape, just playing two on two, you know, one on one and stuff like that. So, for sure, it's, it's one thing that um, I was doing my second year because the first year, you know, I was kind of learning, but I was doing a lot of conditioning by myself, you know, just going to the gym um, kind of like every day, uh, even uh, after hours, you know, uh, coming at night, I was bringing my trainer there, uh, stay two weeks, leaving, coming back, you know, just to try to stay in shape. But best and worst experience of the NBA? Say it again, sorry. Best and worst experience of the NBA. Uh, I said the best experience was uh, like in general. It doesn't have to be like one game or one moment or anything. Like what, what what you took away from it, both positive I've, and negative. I, I say probably playing with you know uh, some of the best player. Uh, uh, be around Kyrie, uh, uh, Al Orford. Uh, you know, all these uh, big guys uh, seeing Jason Tatum and J uh, Jalen Brown at the beginning, you know, how they started, how they are right now, you know, all this process, um, how to come and um, 
be prepared for a game and all this stuff. I, I feel like all this part made me a better player for sure. Mm. Uh, even though I didn't play and stuff like that. And I said the worst, it probably not being there and not be able to in, really enjoy it, you know, really play right. to have a, a role on the team to show what I can do, you know, and, and help a team, you know, so this is probably what I say. The, uh, you spent some time during that time in China also. What, what, was, yeah. what was that? I mean, you were 20 when you went over there, right? Yeah. Man, that's, yeah. that's young to be alone in China. Yeah, it was. And uh, it was really one thing that uh, my mom was pretty much scared of, you know, because it's another country, another culture, you're going to be far. Also, one thing is uh, to communicate Right. With the people outside of China, it, it's also, isn't it crazy that one time I was over, like no one speaks English, and 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 it's really like <laughs> rare that you see somebody speak English. Yeah. Over there. So yeah. me, I was just with my phone calling the translator every time I go to a restaurant, I call him, put him on the phone. <laughs> if I go to taxi, call him, put him on the phone. It's just like I was just going with my phone everywhere, pretty much. And, and what, but and but as far as his parents, I, I loved it. I loved it. It was that that make me um, uh, a bigger person. I say like you know, as far as like my mind, as far as like uh, growing up, like you know, I, I become a man leaving China. You know, I was ready for everything. You know, yeah. uh, being there seven months and you know one month, maybe not two weeks. My family was there, and you know the, the other year I was by myself. You know, right? It, it's. I mean, those those experiences, you either grow quick or you don't. One or the other. If, 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 if you don't grow quick, it ain't, it's never going to work for you. But yeah. then you went back to Boston and, and, and you had a good summer league. And, and were, you, were you expected more again the next time or? For sure. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. But um, like, like I was saying, like living from China, I was playing – like almost the whole game, right? Had right. the bone in my hand. Uh, yeah, but dude, yeah, but dude, come on now, China, come on. I, I talked to a bunch of players that went over to China. It, it, it's no, it's so. This is a thing. It's an easy and, and, life, man. Come on. No, this is a thing, and I, I said that before. Um, it's it's a lot of guys that used to score in Europe or in uh, America, and they go to China and they can score. Come on. Uh, it's the truth. It's a lot of guys that go to China and get cut because they don't score a lot. And, well, and it's well, you have thing. to score a lot to be over there. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's like you got to adjust. It's not just the league that you go to. like, okay, I'm going to score 40 every game and you score 40 because the Chinese, uh, they have they play the they way to play basketball. You know, it's, it's kind of hard to go to the basketball. And you go over there, you might get, you know, hit in the face, hit somewhere, and you don't want to go back to the rim no more. You know, it's it's... You gotta adjust and um, be smart too. But it's it's not. I, I won't say like it's easy compared to the other leagues, but uh, they got their way to play. They got their style of uh, playing basketball. It's, it's pretty much different. Right. I'm, I'm gonna call you Yabu from now on. I, I just I, I just figured Yabu is gonna be your name for me. Yabu is not bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So so <laughs> so Yabu, you gotta understand, man. Like when I played, when I was over here in Spain playing. Yeah, everybody talks about the fact that I played no defense. It's like it's, it's like it's like this thing that goes around like you never played no defense. Or I play defense. I'm like shit. But when I played, if I didn't score 25, if I if, if I scored 12 points and shut down every other player on the team, I'd have been cut. Right, right. I'd have been right. sent home. So it's like I'm like, why why y'all want me to play defense? Like I'm playing the China rules, man. I need to score 25 a game to keep my job. <laughs> Oh my God! That, right. You would have probably been better off playing back in my day. <laughs> now, defense is important. I love I love scoring for sure, but I love defense no, you, too. Love you defense. can D up. I've I've, I've watched you. You can D if you want, I, if you put your mind to it. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 really one thing, you know. Telling myself I don't want him to score on me. Right. I don't want him to score. Like you know you. It's just like um, kind of like a game. I say game of you know one on one. Like I don't want, I don't want you to score on me. And if you score, you're not gonna score again. You know, it's really like a mindset that I'm trying to get uh, every game. Not letting you know my opponent, uh, opponent uh, score on me. Who, who's the guy in the year league? You like when you, when you see on your schedule, you're like, oh shit, here he comes, man. I gotta play against him tonight. I gotta see nobody. Who's that? <laughs> nobody. No, nobody. <laughs> 
Come on, well, I got my com- I got I got my confidence really high, and and when I goes to the game, I tell myself I'm gonna give them problem, but I don't want y'all to give me problem. All right, well, I, I, we all got one where we're like, all right, man, I gotta have my A game tonight, man. I, I know you gotta bring your yeah. A game every night, but there's some day, some days you gotta bring your A plus game. I, I know for sure if we play Barcelona, this is a game I need an A plus plus. Right. You know, this is a game we got to win, especially in Miritich. You know, oh, he, oh, hey, 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 I want to bring it up in front of everybody. He got you the last game. He, hey, he did. <laughs> he did. You know, I, hey, I'm I'm honest. I'm honest. You know, I, I felt the same way. I was like, okay, you got the first one. It's just there's going to be a lot of games left. And there you go. We'll see him again. It's always, sure. it's always good to win the first one. It, sure. it, it's better sure. to win the last one. It is. <laughs> hey, man, there's a lot of talk about. Uh, you you trimmed up now, but there's a lot of talk before about your weight and and, and everything mm-hmm. else. And they say you were maybe too big to, to defend in the league. That was part of the issue in Boston. It, it, is was that a problem for you personally? And how did how have you been able to control that? Not really, because um, over there, um, it's it's one thing, and I think it's, it's a lot of people is like that too. But once you get weight. Sometimes, like, you don't see it yourself, you know? And um, at the time, I wasn't really seeing it. And now, when I watch the videos from, from back back in the day, I was like, I was fat, hey, you know? <laughs> hey, hey I, I watched the video of you, like, when you first got there, and, and I can't remember the two people that are doing the interview with you. It was like an eight, nine-minute interview. You know, I do my research okay. now. And I saw yeah. you sitting down, man. I was like, there's no way he could play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was I was just getting weight. And uh one thing that was hard too is because you know, lack of playing, you know, so right. I wasn't playing and then the food over there is is different, you know. So you, over there you really need to get a chef, you need to get everything clean, you know, with the food because you get weight like quick. You go to dinner like two times and then you got two kilos already. Get those chicken wings, those man. Chicken wings, man. Yes. <laughs> and and me, I love food. Get so those much. buffalo chicken wings. I'll fatten you up in no time. I was getting everything, the steak every night, every like every time. So, you know, I got weight. But uh I think it's more easy to control right now because um obviously I'm playing. Uh I'm playing a lot of minutes too. So, right. you know, it's 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 easier. And of course, here um I got a chef also to to control everything I'm hitting and you know I'm taking more of uh taking care of my body for sure. Y'all just got so much more than when we play, man. Y'all got chefs and then and, it's it's and different <laughs> and masseuses and y'all travel, y'all travel on private planes. I'm like, damn. For sure. Is is way better than and, I, and on top of it, y'all play like 16 minutes a game. I was, you know, we were playing like 40 minutes a game when it was my turn, you know? True, true. And, and playing on those hard ass floors and everything. Hey, I jumped on you a little bit about your weight, right? Here, but I was checking out your Instagram page yesterday, and you got one picture where you, you got one picture where you had a boat. I think it was you holding up. Yes. And I, I don't know if it's a four pack or a six pack. I don't know what it is, <laughs> but but you, hey, you were showing those abs proud, brother. Hey, I was just letting people know. Don't worry about me. I'm controlling everything, and my weight is good. <laughs> Don't worry. That, that, that's hilarious. When I, I was going there, most of your pictures and most of your stuff is like it's, it's all game stuff or whatever. And I saw that one picture. And I said, I said, look at him. I said, look, he had to, I, I said, that one must have been directed right towards Boston. Hey, just, just so people can know, I'm taking care of myself and uh, hey, my body weight is good. When you came back from the States, from China, all that, before you went to Asheville, there, there was some time in between but before you play for them, what were you doing then? Were you, were you just preparing, just getting ready? Just getting ready. Yeah. I was really, um, I, I feel like uh, since um, the situation with Boston, um, it make me like more of a, like a whole worker. Like I, I, I work every time and I, I'm enjoying doing it. So basically during that time, I was practicing every day going to the gym um you know calling my agency if, if it was like any offer or stuff but i was like don't worry i'm i'm gonna stay prepared i'm gonna stay prepared and 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 if a team calls me like they're gonna be surprised how much energy how much ready i was right. and uh I, I always think this is a is a is a good part just to stay ready so you don't have to get ready you know so i would just keep on working every day it's so it's you know as, as athletes 
we're 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 trained. Y'all are trained to, to to just go 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 go. Yeah. But we we have a tendency also to be lazy on the outside. Yeah, you know what do. I mean? And so there's a lot of players that are in your position, have been in your position. I'm sure you probably play with them that are just like, mm -hmm. hey man, I'm just sitting back on this bench making money. I don't yeah. care. You know what I mean? <laughs> So True. No, nobody really realizes how difficult it is through those times to keep not only your body your mind, ready, yeah. but your mind. That's True. that's the hardest thing I think of all of this. What, yeah. what was the most difficult part for you, just being to be prepared? It's like not knowing, you know, until when you're gonna have to stay prepared and work. You know, because I never been in this situation. I always, you know, be on one team for the season, for the season. Right. Another right. team were coming back. Like I never been during the season, no club, you know. So it's be, it was a different situation for me. But uh, I just it's one thing. I love the process. I love working. I love learning new stuff. Uh, working with the trainers, uh, you know, coach in the in the summer and stuff like that. I just I just love it. And for me, I, I bring a, uh, one of the coach, a good guy that I know from the state. He came straight to Paris with us and. Mm -hmm. Uh, he just helped me and we were just practicing every day. I have the same trainer that was with me and training every day. So I, I won't say it was a part that was a little bit difficult, but the most difficult part was probably just not knowing um, right. uh, if you're going to stay like this for two months, three months, if I'm, I'm not going to play the whole season. You know, this was a little bit hard uh, because, of course, if you don't have no club, you don't get no money, too. Right. So <laughs> for sure um this was the the only part but in my head I, I knew that i gotta stay ready and then the club's gonna come soon you know just don't worry about when just work tell, tell me one thing for, for if any young kids are, are watching this because i i yeah. love to work with young kids and i think you know as we athletes grow we always look back a little bit mm -hmm. if i'm a young kid let's say i'm 15 16 or i'm yeah. 14 and i and i want to be i want to be yabo i want to be yabo Shelly. I don't have a trainer to, to work with me. You know what I mean? I don't have yeah, yeah. to come out with me every day. Like how often do you now, or how often did you before just go out by yourself and just like, yeah, and just, and just shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot like all day long. Yeah, exactly. The, the, this is also one thing because the trainer, I started doing this, I probably say like two, three, like three years ago, maybe four years ago. Right. Before that, it was just me either going with the friend or either going by myself. And like you said, like at age 15, I was going to the gym by myself and stay one hour and a half, right. two hours. And, and in my head, that's how, that's how I love the game so much. I was just going. I take the ball going from the, the best line to the other best line. And, and in my head, I'm like, oh, 15 seconds left. And, you know, I try to play the game winner. And then just, you know, enjoying doing everything, playing, dribbling, shooting. And just this make me want to go to the gym more and more. Just once you love, being in the gym, even by yourself, like you, 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 you won already, man. I, I you know, I, I, like you don't have to, like you say, some athletes sometimes we get lazy, but once you love going to the gym, even by yourself, yeah. you already passed that point. So it's like you just love to go over there and work. I, I used to spend hours, man, be pretending like I was Julius Irvin and I was playing Ex exactly was playing the Celtics <laughs> in the finals, you know, down one, For two sure. seconds left, home. <laughs> Missed the shot. No, he got foul. He's got to go to the line and hit two. You know? right, exactly. That's how it goes. Like you got the little like scenario and then you just play with it. And uh, that's it. I, I say just go to the gym, shoot, even if it's by yourself. You know, sometimes it's, it's, it's uh, especially when you're 15. Yeah. Uh, in my case, I'm, I'm talking to one of my friends. Can you? He's like, oh, okay, but. I gotta see my girlfriend, uh, so I don't know. At, at this age, I, I that's got a birthday party tomorrow night. I got this, I got that, and then you you just go by yourself. Okay, I just go, and then you. That's how you really know that I really want that. I, I, I like the I like to let kids know that because a lot of kids just think like, well, I practice two hours a day, or practice ain't nothing. Pra and nothing. Pra practice is to develop a team. It's really not to yep. develop your personal skills. You, nope. you learn so yep. much more on your own. Exactly. You know, spending, like you said, that hour and a half, two hours, or, or just sitting there shooting a thousand free throws, yeah. you know, whatever. But um, yeah, like like you said, just just the free throws, just you know, yeah. working on some stuff that you know you're not good and you can you know do better. The dribble, nobody's gonna tell you, I'll go over there and do the dribble. Go by yourself, work the dribble. Yeah. If you see that your shot is not really, you know, um, 
efficient, just go work on your free throw, work on your four. You know, it's so much thing to 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 do at the gym when you're by yourself. It's amazing. So, so you came back from all this and bam, just jumped right into Asheville. Yeah. And, and, and jumped right into the EuroLeague. Maybe yes. So a couple games your first season because you got in late. Mm -hmm. And then and then played the, the what was it the 2000 I always get these years confused man I'm so old now 2020 2020 21 I said 2021 20, and as well the entire season what was it like just to jump right back in the yearly I mean it's because it's a whole different competition now I mean it's not yeah. NBA it's not China I don't want anybody to get mad at me I'm not gonna say it's better it's worse or whatever but but you know but you have to bring your A game every night. I mean, there's there's not a night where you can't play a good game because you, you just can't lose. For sure. For sure. So for me coming uh, in Asbury and play EuroLeague because I never played EuroLeague before. So uh, for sure, I knew uh, the French League. So coming over there and, and playing the French League and, and having good game, first of all, my confidence was, I was feeling good. Um, like I told you, like I was prepared already. So when I played that first game of the Euro League, I think it was against uh, Valencia. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't really like stressing or putting pressure on me. I was like, let's go. You know what? Play your game. And you will see during the game how it goes. What can you adjust and what can you do better? Mm -hmm. And uh, the coach was, um, um, oh, I forget his name. Who's coach? Of Asville, our coach, it was. Um... It wasn't Parker? Yeah, n no, but no, Parker, not TJ Parker, the one from before. He was coach of uh, Monaco. How come I forget his name? Oh, uh, Mitrovic. Oh, yeah, Mit Mitrovic. And uh, it's one thing with him is the defense. Right. And uh, when I got there, I was playing with so much uh, energy on defense and, and just try, you know, help the team that he led me on the court. And then after that, Playing the first game, I was just learning, okay, this, I can't do that. Okay, they leave me open. Let me just take my shot and just, you know, going from there. And uh, that's how I really play with the Euro League. But it's it's so competitive. Like you say, every night, every game, you got to come and perform. You, you I mean, you, you put up decent numbers, without a doubt, in, in Asheville. And obviously, you drew the attention of a lot. Of, I'm sure more teams than just Real Madrid, they're, they're, they're probably chasing you down. But... I mean, you travel all over the world, essentially, U.S., China, whatever. You finally get back to your country and, you, mm -hmm. and you're playing in the EuroLeague and you decide to get up and go. First of all, what first of all, what Tony Parker had to say to you, I, I read an article where he said, hey, man, good job. Or, man, I don't believe that. Tony's a competitor, <laughs> man. Don't, you, you, can't come up, you can't come in and BS me on my own show, man. Tell me what Tony really said to you. Really? Really? He, he really came to me and uh, told me, hey, I'm really proud of you. Uh, it, it's really what we talked about, you know, about Asbel, try to be like a transition for you to bounce back mm -hmm. and go where you want to go. But um, yeah, but he, he, was he, but he didn't want to go to Real Madrid. I go back, go back to Boston or something. Listen, <laughs> when 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 the offer came. Uh, him, his brother, TJ Parker, and uh, some of the assistant coach, they were so happy, like, for me. That's they were so proud. They were so happy. They was like, listen, like, this is, you deserve it. It was like, you worked so much for this. You came back, you know, didn't really know how it will, uh, it will go. And it, it would, like, you just, like, you, you, you should just be happy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, they were, they were really just happy about me. And it was like, listen, you give everything for us. Like, we appreciate you coming in here, being serious and really take this serious, you know? And, uh, they were just happy for me to, to go, you know, for sure. What, what was your, I mean, like I say, you, you kind of been kicked around Boston, China, back and forth, yeah. G League here and there. What was your, your mentality when you signed a one year deal? Well, I mean, were you, were you like, God, I gotta, cause you like, you, gotta, you know you got to give your best in a one-year deal. Like everybody mm -hmm. says, well, the guy, sure. the guy says a five-year deal, he usually relaxes the first couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> one-year deal, I mean, you got to have the mentality, but there's a lot of, again, there's a lot of that pressure in the back of your mind going, I've got yeah. one year to, 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 show my, to show my worth. Yeah, true. So I, I'd say it was a pressure, but like a good pressure. Cause it, because it's like a pressure that you have and you go to every day telling you, you know, for sure you got one year, but it's, it's also a good pressure that make you want to to work, make you want to go over there and kill it, mm -hmm. you know, make you want to go over there and don't think, 
you know, you don't have 10 years to, to get prepared. You got just one year. So go over there. Don't think. Play your best game and just try to get better even every game. You know, that was really this type of pressure that I have. And it's just, it was feeling good. You know, it was, it was, it was really something that I um, enjoy. But uh, I'm here. I'm, I'm live down the road from here close by. So I'm in Madrid also. Unfortunately, we have to do it okay. this way, but it, this city makes it a lot easier too, doesn't it? It is. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. Like I've never been to Madrid, never came here or, you know, uh, had the feeling to really be in the city. And uh, it's so beautiful. They have so much thing to do. Yeah. Uh, even like as far as like just restaurant, like they got everything. Yeah. And and of course, I don't go to dinner every time because of course I'm gonna start getting weight again. But but uh, when I do, I, hey, I make sure you, you know, go, try. If you go to dinner every night, you better fire your chef. Yeah, it's exactly, <laughs> exactly. Especially him. Like I'm paying him just to make food. So if I go out, it's a problem. But you know, sometimes on the weekend or, or you know, with, with some of the teammates too, like you know, we 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 having dinner uh, uh, here and there, you know. So for sure, Madrid is a, it's a beautiful city. All you French guys, man, the whole team is it's like the French national. Team, right? <laughs> it, it was it was so funny when we had the national team and we talking about Madrid and going there. I was like, oh wow, I forgot that y'all too gonna be with me over there too. So yeah, having four French people on the on the team, I think it's the so first time something like this happened uh, in, in the club, it, I think. It's got to be the first time in Spain, I think. They're, they're... Yeah, I think it's the first time. But it's just, it feels good. And and we're having so much fun here. And uh, I think we, we're we doing great so far, you know. All you guys, I was with Poirier one night too, man, just hanging with him. And I and I, I, I get along real well with Fab and with Lucy. And, yeah. and all you guys have the same person account. I think y'all work with my boy from Beast Boat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> Willie, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He's the, he's the one who is the man in charge in here. Yeah, you know, he's the man who of the, takes care of the little the stuff. Chef and yeah, right. Exactly. It's like um, making us try new stuff. Of course, uh, visiting stuff and 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 all the stuff around Spain, but also like in Madrid. Like he is is so connected. Right. Uh, it's it's good. It's good to have to to have his contact and uh, just to go around for sure. Yeah, yeah. I let I let him know. I let him know, man. He's he's always calling me. I'm like, man, call the guys that are playing. I don't have that kind of money anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I I, I want to go back to the the what I said earlier is. I'm amazed at the way you fit in. Not, I mean, I know Artel's playing well and 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 Vince was playing well and 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 the new guys, a lot of the new guys are playing well. And I think that's always had a, a, a lot to do with the base that Real Madrid has had. But even over the years, I've been here for what 10, 11 years now, commentating about six or seven. I've never seen anybody just kind of like boom, fit in so well so quickly like you have. Is it because of the French guys on a team? Is it because of the way you're accepted by other people? You, I mean, you definitely accept. You got the perfect yeah. game for the fans. Fans love your game. It's it's mm -hmm. all about energy, and and you feed off the fans too, which is what I, what I did when I played. True. So so what 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 do you think is the key to to your comfort level on the floor with all these new guys around you? I pr I probably say, like. Everything that you name, you know, having French people, of course, make it easier. Uh, having uh, fans pushing you, of course, it make it easier. And all, all the guys in here make it easier for me, too. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the other Spanish guy, uh, even this summer, you know, when uh, we were in the Olympic and stuff like that, then we, we see some of the Spanish guys. It was already like coming to me. Oh, you you come in Madrid. OK, yeah. Good luck. You know, we're going to see each other. It's like you can tell that they just nice people right and 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 on our team you can tell that we have a good chemistry because everybody can understand everybody mm -hmm. so so it, it make it easier for me on the court to be more relaxed no no pressure you know i just enjoy and of course you know um it, it was one thing um that i was thinking this summer when i was working out and stuff it was just to come in in there and fit mm -hmm. just try to fit um not try to do too much, not try to, you know, go crazy. Just think about myself. Just think about the team. Just try to feed play with a lot of energy and, and see how the game goes. And 
uh, it's, it's been pretty great so far. Uh, having a good relationship with everybody, with the coaches, uh, everybody from the staff and everybody that works here. So for sure, everything is 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 for me to play my best in the, on the court. That's perfect, man. It, it, it's definitely working out for you. And like I said, you just signed that. New, Thank you. You just signed that new deal, and I think all the all the yeah. Madrid fans are excited about it to have you around for a little while. And on top of it, you signed the deal. With, you know, in a position where you got some good players running around, Trey Tompkins, Anthony, yeah. and everything else. But, but does you sign on that deal? I'm put on the spot now. Does that mean the NBA's out? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd say. I mean, everything can happen. You know, for sure. I got. Oh, I got is that a, politically yeah. correct player answer, man? That's come on. <laughs> no, like, like I, I would say, like, of course, I signed here three years. So in my mind, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm. I feel good in here. I feel great. The situation is the, the best situation for me here. Now I have a buyout too, you know? So for sure, um, if if a team's want me to go, now I'm going to have the decision to, to you know, think, is it a good option? Like, what's the situation going to be? Am I still going to be like Boston? Like, like why would I leave playing here and then having a great season and being great and to go back and not playing, you know? So uh, for sure, it's, it's, it's different, but I won't say it's out. I won't, I'm just going to say, you know, this is my security. Like, you know, being here, signing the contract for three years is, is great. You know, some, sometimes I've always said this, stability is is even more important than money. Exactly. Because with stability and with, with being with the same people for a long period of time makes you a better player over, you know, they've been changing every year. Although obviously we see you can fit in just about anywhere, but yeah. that stability will, I, I believe in my mind, it will, you know, makes people a better player than going here and there all the time. For sure. And, and you know, I had the one year contract. I couldn't wait to the end of the season, see how it goes and everything. But with everything that happened in life, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. I needed to be, you know, uh, secure and to have a stability for me, for my family and all the people that I'm having around, you know? So for sure, uh, when this offer came, like I always said that and we were talking about it with my agent, it's some offer that you cannot refuse. Right. Sign a three-year deal with Madrid, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's of course. this year plus three more, right? Yes. Perfect, perfect. Good for you, man. That's great. That's great. Thank you I so can't, much. I Thank can't, you. I got a couple more things before we finish. And of course I can't finish without talking about the silver medal you probably got sitting at your house. Yeah. In, in <laughs> but be honest, that's not the one you wanted, right? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't say that because me going to the finals, I'm thinking, hey, let's just shock the world. Yeah. We can do it. We do it one time, even if it was not the final, you know, because of course they're going to play different than the first game that we won against them. Right, like exactly. we, we know they're going to adjust. We know it's going to be a, a different games, but even when you watch the game, we here, like we can, we'll still have a chance till the end, of course. And um, Kevin drank play his best game of the, <laughs> the whole competition. And um we we still have this feeling that we could have won. We could have won, and uh, you know, going to to twenty twenty four in our head is like, hey, this is not gonna happen twice. It's gonna be in Paris. That's in your back. We're coming, oh, like, man. Like, we're coming back from them for sure, <laughs> for sure. So so no, it, it's still a good feeling being a uh, second uh, in the Olympics. I will never thought this of, of my life. You know, being in Olympic, doing it. You know, watching this since I'm a kid. I will never thought this in my whole life, you know. So, being able to to be there, uh, come second, but still have a great tournament because we lost only one game right, exactly. in the whole tournament, right. and it's the, it's the final. So, uh, we 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 went back home having this uh, good feeling uh, still, you know, because uh, it was pretty amazing. Everybody was doubting us. I say uh, a lot of people was thinking that it was impossible for us to go that far. So we. We for sure um, have some new fans now, and uh, and uh, basketball in France is is it's getting bigger. Well, it, it was man. I watched some of the highlights just to kind of prepare myself. I, I saw the game. I saw a little bit of the game when it was live, and I watched some of the highlights today. And uh, man, it was foul shots that killed y'all in the long run. You made it was foul shots, man. It was, it was those free throws that that you guys missed that that. I, I think you would have put so much more pressure on them 
if if y'all made free throws. True, true. Yeah. That that was the toughest part to watch right there, man. Why you know, cause cause they were nervous. They were nervous. They, they, um, you can tell. Yeah. Like, you know, when they were taking timeouts and stuff, we're looking at them like, hey, they they they're thinking like what's going on right now? Right. Like, they, they, right. They're playing their best game, like, you know. So for sure. But we happy that we make them, you know, doubt for a second because when you go to Olympics, usually what happened with the net, the the American team, they come and beat everybody, go back home, celebrate, and so yeah. you know. So for sure, like we know this year they came. Y'all are and back. Make, Y'all are back there somewhere. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hey, for sure. hey the, the, the Boston Globe. I, I I read the Boston Globe said that was a player that the Celtics thought he could be anyway, <laughs> after the Olympics. Does that does that comment hurt you? I make you laugh or motivate you even more. Obviously, it made you laugh. I just saw that. I'm I'm laughing every time. You know, it's 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 really nothing that can really like make me mad. Like I'm trying not to get all this stuff to get on me. It's it's whatever. You know, people. You know, it's free. You you can think whatever you think. You know, it's you. That doesn't mean it's true. That doesn't mean you know. It's it's just you. So for for me, bad good comments. It, I I don't let it like affect me. Mm. Are you are you married here? You got family here, or, or are you here by yourself? yeah? You... Uh, yeah, I'm I'm married. I got family. Yeah, Do you got kids. Yeah, I got a son. Oh, you got a son. I couldn't find anywhere. I was like, man, has this got married or what? How old is your son? <laughs> uh, it's like two, two years old. Yeah, I mean, he about to turn two soon. All right, so you get most of your sleep on the road trips, though, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and they're here with Madrid. They like Madrid too. They get along fine. They love it. They love it. Everybody love it. Uh, my family is here most of the time too. Uh, so they come in here uh, and they just love it. It's just a, a different feeling. Like outside right now, it's sunny. Yeah, I know. You know, it's, it's just, it's so, <laughs> it's so different from what I'm used to. So for sure, it may, it makes like everything great. You know, your league pays me to do these interviews, man. But after, after I was like doing my research last night and I checked out your, um, your, your clothing line online, my wife is like, I want that. I want this. I want that. I'm like, well, I said, well, hold on a second. <laughs> I said, I said, this, I said, this interview is going to cost me more money than I made. <laughs> no, yeah, we, we have the, the third collection that just came out like a, a week ago, a couple of days ago. Um, yo, I mean, yo, yo, let, let, wait, before, before you get into it, let me set it up yeah. a little bit because I was like, all right, well, here's another athlete, you know, with this with a line and he, you know, he's probably got like a sweatshirt that's got his initials on it, some stupid shit, like right. you know what I mean, whatever. Man, I went into the website, I was like, whoa, wait, hold on a second. I said, this, this <laughs> is a real deal. Yo, yo, some no. of that stuff is bad, I love that stuff. Thank thank you, thank you so much. I mean, we, that was that was um, a big part that um, we were trying to agree with the two other friends that I'm working with. Um, we seen a lot of guys, like you say, like uh, they try to do the lifestyle and stuff, but it's it's so too much like sportwear. Right. Or sometimes it's, it's like you know not it. So we try to mix on this, but have something that not I, I won't say like luxury, but it's cl- close right. to it. You know that you can wear to go out and stuff like that. And uh, we we try to keep this with mixed basketball a little bit yeah. to have like a little bit of sweater, but that you can wear outside. And I like stuff. that so, hoodie, man. I like that gray hoodie. That hoodie is, is I love yeah. it. So not, thank you so much. But I'm gonna have to, we, I'm gonna we, have to give you my address. Maybe you have to send me one. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, or for just, sure. Or just bring one to the game and drop it off to me one day. All right, say that. This 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 one's gonna be on me. You send me your size and everything, and I give it to you. No problem. Hey, man, I'm your size more or less. Okay, perfect. I will get you one. But but yeah, so we we would like we would really try to play around this, and you know we had to, we spend a lot of time uh, thinking what can we do uh, first, second collection, third collection, just try to change a little bit to see. But people like we have a lot of um, great uh, backup from the people. Just that we they, we love the textile, we love it. Um, everything you know, the color that you guys do, the style that you try to do, and we just try to be a little bit different from the other brand. And it, I'm going to throw it out here. It's WWWH. But yeah. It, H. It, it's, it's Ordura, right? 
Yeah, all the but, yes. but it's, it's just an H with the D O E H D O E yeah. dot com. Y'all check it out, man. If you're listening, check it out because the, the clothes are really, uh, really cool. Thank you. I got, I got, I got the website also on uh, my Instagram. If you just oh, want to go, go, go right to his Instagram. Perfect. But don't, hey, but watch out for that one picture when he's on the boat with the with the. <laughs> Drop a like, hey, man. I, I think you put some filters in there. I'm not gonna say no. <laughs> No, no, no. It's me. All right, my man. You know it's test time, right? You know we got to do this yearly yeah. test. Yeah. And I just found out today that the that, that Nico Nico Lamelli got one mm-hmm. of the questions right last week, and we got it wrong. So Nico's like topped out at a hundred points. He's like the number one guy this in, in over the last Oof. two seasons. So okay. I got five questions for you. Okay. Each question go from easiest to hardest, one through five. Each question is worth. It increments by 10 points. And one is worth 10, two is worth 20, okay. right? The five is worth 50, all right? Number five is worth okay. 50. Okay. So we add up your score and we'll figure it out. You ready? I'm ready. We're gonna test you now. Okay. You, you already got the easy one right before about the draft, so. That, okay. that, that was just a one. This one, the, the, this one should be 10 points. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the actual coach of Anadula Efes Istanbul? Uh, okay, this this supposed to be easy or yeah, that's the easy one. <laughs> no, I um I say Er Ergin Ataman. There you go. There you go. I was man, if he gets this one wrong, we're in trouble. <laughs> All right, you got ten points. Number two, one twenty. Who is the top scorer as of right now today for LDLC Asvel Virvan? Oof, I'm so, so I will. It's two that I'm thinking. I'll say you can only guess one though. You could think Oof. both of them out loud, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give any hints. Yeah, Melly will. Melly will come here and kick my kick my butt. <laughs> I'm for sure thinking about Elio Cobo or Chris Jones. But as right now, should I think on the team? Yeah, I might say. All right, I'm gonna say Elio Cobo. Got it. Got Oof. There you go. I, I, I was really like, I, I didn't know between him and Chris Jones because I know that they right the top there, two. Yeah. Bro. So yeah, okay, Eli for sure. Right, that was a little harder than I thought it was gonna be right there. <laughs> All right, number three worth thirty points. You're at thirty right now. That's gonna give you sixty. Be this. How many Euroleague Final Fours has Madrid hosted? The city of Madrid. How many okay. Euro League Final Fours have they hosted? So first of all, it's one in 2015. I remember that one. That's the obvious and one. And they won it. Um, I think I said two. You got it. Bam, two. The other one was in 2008. 2008, yeah. 2008. Euro League Final Four 2008. So that's 60 points. Uh oh. You might be able to tie Melly right here. You got number four and number five coming. Okay. And I got a big problem with this question, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna ask it anyways. People at Euro League gonna have to hear from me. Who is the most point who is the record for the most points scored in a single Euro League game since the year 2000 for Real Madrid? Oof. Uh, I'm thinking of, uh, so I got to remember the, who was <laughs> playing it's, so it's Sergio Rudy. Uh, oh, Luca don't see was playing. Yeah. No. I said Luca. No. You got it, man. <laughs> You got it, yep. 40 points, man. That's 100 points right now. Yeah, no, no, no. I, it, was, oof, it was killing it here. I remember because the year that I'm in Boston, we're watching him going crazy, final for and everything, and I was like, who's this guy? But man, I, he's going to come and crush it. Hey, I read this question. I had to call my boy a year league, but you know, you know I scored 63 in a year league game, right? You did? Yeah. Whoa, yes, I, I didn't know. Yes, I called him up. I'm like, whoa, hold on a second. I said, wait, this ain't right. 
<laughs> he, he said, no, we got to put in since the year 2000. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I was like, don't, don't, hey, don't. hey, 63 is a lot of points. Yeah, like, don't be taking away my game now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but right now, you got your, you're at 100 points, so you're good to go. You're right. right now with Melly, from what I understand. So number five is the last one. You might be able to get this. You might be able to go five for five. How many seasons did Nicolas Batum play in the EuroLeague? Is, so is it like a trick question, kind of? You've been handling pressure good. I can't I can't give you any hints, man. And, and all these guys will get mad at me if I give you hints. Just because I don't remember him playing EuroLeague? Oof, I said zero. God, the answer is three. Oh my God, which team? He played 2006. To 2008, two seasons with Le Mans, and then he played 2011-2012 with SLUC Nancy. Oh, I remember. It was during, it was during the lockout. I would, yeah, but I don't remember them being Euro League. That's crazy. That one got that one got me too. That was the that was. I I I, I thought Le Mans. I didn't know if it was one year, two years, but the the, the other one got me. Wow. No, the, this one was like a tricky question. That was a tricky question. <laughs> I was like, he's going to say zero. I know he is. <laughs> yeah, because I, I really don't remember because I remember the lockout when they came back right. and they played. Right. And uh, But I can't remember that those teams was uh, okay. That that was a good one. That was a good one. All right, my man. Yeah, well, hey, number one, thank you so much for taking that time to be here on the crossover with me, man. It's always, uh, I know you guys got like crazy schedules and you're all over yeah. the place. Now it's even crazier with COVID and things get canceled and you don't know where you are. Yeah. Number two, man, you're 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 even more than what I expected, like sitting down talking. I love like before I used to do this, sit down, we sit in the same room and talk, and I'd really get to know you. But man, your right. personality is just so out just outstanding and it's, and you you, you you people can get the energy from you just with that smile, man. It's a smile. Alone. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. When I do these interviews, man, I'm always amazed by just the humility of you guys. And and because back in my day, we were different, man. We were all just like, leave me alone, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. But, but now it's all access and, and you've given it all, man. You, you, so I thank you for your generosity, for your time, and of course, for your sincerity, man. And and and, I, and I'll be sitting on that, I'll be sitting on that, that basket waiting one day for that sweatshirt. <laughs> I got you. Hey, I got you. 2XL, I got you. <laughs> hey, man, I appreciate it. Good job, man. You're a great guest. Hey, thank you so much for having me, man. Thank, thank you. you. Good appreciate luck to you and your family here in Madrid.